the more niche you are, I mean, you've got a smaller, you've got a smaller community and they're interested in the exact same thing. And so they're searching for what you have. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me excited to have Andrew Funderberg. Andrew, how are you doing today? Good. And you didn't butcher the last name. Well done. Uh, yeah. So, so, and that you're, you're also known as Fondy. We had a, a nice little conversation prior to, so, uh, born in the Pacific Northwest, but you've lived, man, you've lived in, in a couple of different cool places, Paris, Moldova, Japan, uh, founded Fundy software 2008, uh, after selling your language school in Japan and moved your wife and two kids back to the U S so. Oh man, that that's quite the adventure. I've, I've never yeah, lived when, in a foreign country, foreign country, nonetheless, several uh, different locations. <laughs> yeah, I've so. been uh, lost and and confused in multiple countries throughout the years. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Uh, so, Fundy Designer has single handedly added over a billion dollars in revenue to the professional wedding and portrait industry uh, based on patented design algorithm, uh, as well as leading auto design technology, man, you know, you're going to just have to kind of explain this stuff to myself yeah. and our listeners. Cause I, th I think that's just more valuable than me just saying what it is. So anyway, so, that, that just gives people kind of the gist of who you are, but why don't let's, let's dive in. Let me tell me a little bit more about your background and, and kind of what all that stuff really means. So I, I kind of fell ass backwards into uh, software. So I, I have a degree in literature. So I studied English literature in college, went into the Peace Corps, former Soviet Union, uh, lived in Paris, moved to Japan. Uh, I wanted to be an ESL teacher abroad. Wow. And so I did that for a while. Um, found out that I loved living abroad. I didn't like teaching very much, <laughs> <laughs> especially kids. It just, I don't have the patience for it. Yeah, And then I read a book in the early 2000s that was like, you got to have passive income. Like you got to create some passive income. Like that's just, you got to do that. And, I, you know, I, I tell people I come from a long line of poor people. Um, I'm the first business owner in my family uh, and had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I got to create some passive income. I was into photography so I created some Photoshop actions and scripts. Like, I think my initial investment was like $2,000 or something to get something cobbled together that I could sell. And it made uh, $4,000 the first month. So I'm like, sweet. Yep. Yep. I'm in and just kept pouring the cash in and building it. And then we created a Photoshop plugin and then we created a desktop app. But where, where uh, our core proficiency lies is in automating things that are kind of a pain in the ass on the design side. Hmm. So imagine, uh, I'm sure people out there are familiar with, uh, if you haven't used it, but like your wife has probably used Shutterfly to order right. yeah. cards and books. So imagine that for professionals, that was just a lot faster and, and a more elegant auto design. So like Shutterfly, you can go choose some images and it will uh, like auto layout a book. Yeah. Our automation is just more elegant. You get a, a lot more accurate storytelling in the book as far as ordering clustering images together, which sounds like who cares, but that's really important in the professional market. Oh yeah. And um and we've patented that. And then now we're gonna take that same auto design, auto layout technology, and we're getting ready to launch a social media design app. So being able to just grab some photos, we'll have videos uh, coming soon and then Choose a template, hit a button, and everything's laid out, including your text. So, for example, what what I'm really so I'm really lazy fundamentally. Fundamentally, I'm lazy. I'm like, I don't want to do the work. I want the outcome. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, how can we let lazy people do stuff that uh, non lazy people get? <laughs> so we do little things like you put in three pieces of text, and then you hit your button, and then we'll take that text and we'll 
put that automatically into the templates, both with stories and carousels, and we'll be doing it with reels and slideshows. So basically let, having you do one thing and then giving you three benefits from that thing instead of just one benefit. Like in Canva, you can choose a template, but then you got to go in and click all the text and edit it yourself and replace it and do all this crap that nobody yeah. likes doing. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I love that, which is really technology, right? It, it, that it's taking what, <clears throat> you know, what lazy people yeah, or what people that want to work hard is taking that and going, let's make this so lazy people can also get the benefit. Yeah, right. Yeah, isn't that, yeah. isn't that like really technology? And, and fundamentally, like, everybody's lazy. Fundamentally. Like fundamentally, we all don't yeah, do this. Yeah. Like crap. every, every little new tech app is to be like, Hey, yeah, you're lazy. This, this is to make your life easier. Yep. You know? Yeah. So um, I think that most, a lot of technology companies really approach with like, Hey, let make people able to do something. But the real key with technology is like, let people do something really fast and easy. That's that's where technology really shines. Just the ability yeah. to do something doesn't really get you very far. Yeah, that's that's true, definitely. So with this kind of new um, technology or new new app you're designing, um, give me give me like a real life example, like you. How, okay. how could I utilize it? I want to put out a post on social media. How, how could I? Use yeah. It? So uh, an easy thing to do, I would imagine just with our mutual friends and group friends, you probably have like a lot of real estate agents that might listen to this or people sure. who are into real estate, right? So yeah. let's say you're a real estate agent. You have some photos of a new listing and you want something a little bit fancier than, uh, you know, just a single image post. So you can yeah. Yeah. take let's say 10 images, click on those images, and then the next screen, add three lines of text, you know, maybe, you know, 3000 square feet, beautiful sure. home, sure. you know, custom cabinetry, and then choose your logo, and then choose a template for a carousel and template for a set of uh, stories, and then you're done. And it shows up and it looks Yep. So then you're well done designed. and then you can download that and then post that to social media yeah. at, at will. So it's, it's, it's nothing that you can't do in other apps. It's just that instead of taking five or 10 minutes to do it, it's going to take you 60 seconds. Interesting. Could you, will that be available to use in like, I'm, I'm just thinking of like our apartment buildings, you know? Yeah. Um, would that be something we could use across various does it have to be social media? Could it be like, you know, apartments.com or, or something like that? Well, these are really uh, designed for social media posts, okay. right? It's all, it's like, that's the name of it. Social, social design app.com, right? It's built right into the name. Yeah. So it's really just for social media. And that is, you know, you ask for pillars of wealth. That is one of the pillars when you're creating something like software is that you need to niche down. Very niche. It's niche within the niche within the niche, right? Hmm. So for example, like is, is my, that because so Fundy just... software is not just for photographers. It's not for professional photographers, it's for professional wedding and portrait photographers. Hmm. And is that because it just doesn't work? It's so specialized where it would be so difficult to design well to work across the or what what's the what's the well? So the reason? thing is is the output for the social design app, the out it outputs uh files that are the exact size of Facebook and Instagram stories and then gotcha. Instagram and TikTok carousel sizes. So it's it's it the output is the exact size that you need for posting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now you could post those anywhere because they're just picture files, but the format might not match what you need. That that makes sense. So specialized just for that and um what I, I I mean I'm naive on technology, yeah. so would it just be difficult? Like why why wouldn't you make it so it's for the social media, but also for other various media types? Or would it just, uh, same like, thing in it, in any business, right? So for example, uh, what like what is your core real estate business? Yeah, it's it's buying apartment complexes. Yeah, well, why don't you buy? commercial buildings and single family homes and this and that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Sure. 
Yeah. So I if mean, you try to please everybody, you please nobody. You please nobody. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. I love that. Uh, well, cool. So let, let's talk about kind of the growth of the company and, and or, mm -hmm. you know, the things that you've been doing and finding successful. I guess that's my first question is, what have you been like doing that you've found successful? You know, obviously the design and, and creating a product that's niche, but how are you then trend, you know, translating that in actual income and actual sales? Like what's the, what's the, some of the success tips that you can provide our listeners with that. So, yeah, so that's, you know, that's the thing, right? Getting, getting that core market and building up that, uh, core customer base. Right. Um, and then also side core pillar. Um, I own a software company. I cannot write one line of code, right? Really? I don't know how software works right so is your the, you're just coming up with kind of the ideas and saying yeah. hey we need to solve for this and then you're hiring yeah. the yeah. right people which is the biggest blessing ever the, the biggest blessing is to own a business and you don't know how to do the work within the business right that's because then you don't get sucked in yeah right if yeah. you own an apartment building down the road and, and you know how to do basic plumbing that's like the worst thing in the world that could happen to you yeah you're <laughs> right? in there you're in there at midnight Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the next, the next core thing, uh, is, and that's why it's so much easier to market within a niche is because then, you know, your company can be part of that niche community. And then that's how you build your core, you know, that groundswell, that initial groundswell, you know, your first thousand customers are the hardest ones to get. After that thousand customers, it's much easier because then word of mouth and everything yep. spreads organically. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, you bring it back to, to the apartments or to anything, when you think about it, the more niche you are, I mean, you've got a smaller, you've got a smaller community and they're interested in the exact same thing. And so they're searching for what you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like if I built something where you could design anything then how do you find the customer? How do you find you know? the customer? Yeah. Right. So, so that's by niching down that thing. And then also everybody's, uh, you know, we're the same, like our attention span is microseconds, right? If somebody goes to a website and they don't understand within five seconds of what that product is, they're out. And so is if you're something not you do to, to stand apart then when that, when somebody comes to your website, what are they going to see? That's going to attract them. Well, that's the part of the niche, right? You have to, this, this is a thing for you to do for, so, you know, this is a thing that this type of person needs to do this thing. Yep. Right. You know, design software for professional photographers, you know, our social media design is automated social media designs. And then the subtext is like automated carousels and story designs. So it's, it's like, this is what it is. And this is all that it is. And if this is what you want, you stay. And if that's not what you want, you leave. Yeah. No, and that, and that makes sense actually. Cause when you say it simple like that, you know, automated social media designs, I'm like, Ooh, I need that. Like yeah. I, you didn't have to tell me really much prior to us recording. You said something. And I was like, Ooh, I need that. Yeah. That's but if I said, uh, design anything, an app to design anything. I would have been like, yeah, sounds cool. Exactly. Right. But I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got a point. Like I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I would have said sounds cool just cause that's a nice thing to say, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have probably asked that many more questions Yeah, and it wouldn't have been that, that intriguing to me, but I've got a problem. And the problem is I don't know our, you know, and I don't want to spend that much time designing my social media posts, but I want them. Well, I want them much more, you know, eloquently. I, I like they're just sophisticated they're ugly, looking, right? right? You ugly. want to look sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want, I want that. So that, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, what's a mistake that you've made in, in kind of growing these, you know, businesses and how have you learned from it? Uh, the biggest mistake I made was thinking that, to grow a business means hiring more people. Hmm. 
I, for some reason, and I have no idea why, for some reason I got it in my head, the more people you employ, the bigger your business is and the better your business is. Hmm. So uh, right in 2014, we went from 650K to 1.8 million in top line revenue in one year. And it was the worst thing that happened to me. Because the first thing I did was like, oh, I have this much extra money coming in per month. I need to hire this much extra payroll. <laughs> and what what I mean, what did that do? Uh, it, extra it, it basically sucked up all of the profits. And so I didn't have extra profits yeah. to throw into marketing to keep feeding the engine to feed that growth. So how do you know then you're ready to hire somebody new versus you because know, you don't want to wait too long, right? You don't you, you have to hire yeah. people. Well, I already, I had employees. I was just adding too many. And then I was also hiring the wrong people. Like I just didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. So do you, you have know, a process so, now to like kind of guide you through that? Yeah. So I, I mean, we basically, you know, I, I learned a lot through the books like traction and, and rocket fuel and stuff and, and basic and just made it need based. Right. So, Hey, here's a bit, here is a metric that we're not meeting. These are the needs we, we have to have to meet this metric. Yep. And then the next step was, do we have anybody in house or a combination of two or three people in house that can meet that metric hmm. and keep pushing that. And then if we can't make the decision, Oh, do we have the wrong people? Do we need to jettison one of our employees and get a different employee or do we need to add an employee? Or do we need to add a part-time contractor to meet those metrics? So make it, you know, instead of, I was kind of like, oh, how much time do I think I need to get this stuff done? And then I was just adding bodies to fill in that time, which was an imaginary number versus just looking at the ex actual metric. Because sometimes, like I'm a creative type, so sometimes I'm like, oh, in order to meet this metric, I need like an extra full-time person because my brain is all over the place. And then I discover, oh, you know, somebody in-house that is a, has a completely different type of brain can get this done in five hours a week Yeah, yeah. just because they're a different type of person. Yeah, that no, that's, uh, I mean, so easy to like, just think you need to hire, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes so easy to think you don't need to hire. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, we always struggle with it. It's a challenge because do I need to hire? Do I not need to hire? And, and mm -hmm. hiring obviously can add complications, but it can also add profitability. Yeah. Not hiring can do the same thing. Yeah. Right? From um, what I've seen, I, I deal with a lot of creative entrepreneurs, yeah. you know, visionary creative types. And, uh, usually they try to hire people that are similar to them and they need the exact opposite, right? They need, the opposite. you know, Mr. Spreadsheet, Mr. To-do yeah. list, check, 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 reporting backs, you know? Yep. I think every entrepreneur, it feels like, or the vast majority of them, the first thing they need is that, that type of person, that super yeah. well-organized, yeah. um, type of person that, that because yeah. most entrepreneurs, are visionaries, right? That they're mm -hmm. most of them, like they've got the big ideas, but they yeah. like, like you, you don't, you don't, you don't code. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so speaking of that, I, that, that's a question I got, like, I'm sure there's people listening and, and I know I've had ideas myself, but I'm like, yep. I have no freaking clue how to build something like that. Yeah. So was somebody like, I, I guess, how did you even get the courage to go do something like that. And then and for somebody who's like, oh, I've got some ideas. I'd, I'd love to actually put those to practice, but I have no clue how to code. I have no clue how to build this. Mm -hmm. I don't know the first thing about it. Yeah. How do you go out and start something like that? Yeah. That's the thing. Like if I, if, if I was going to do it from the beginning again, I would probably be too, too scared to do it. I was just, I didn't know how hard it was going to be. And I was just mm -hmm. like, ah, I'll just jump off the cliff and figure it out on the way down, you know, <laughs> which I think most entrepreneurs are. They're like, I just got to do the thing. Yeah. I'm just going to jump in. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest, the biggest mistake I see most people that are not in software trying to get in software, they want to create the perfect app that does everything. 
you know, they're like, oh, I want to, I want to make a new version of Salesforce that's even better that, than Salesforce and has more features. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you're, you don't have enough money to do that. Like yeah. you need, like, that's a $20 million project. <laughs> But the big key, so where, where we were able to grow is choose one thing that nobody else is doing well and do that one thing really well. And then the minimum of other features, extremely mediocre, <laughs> right? do one thing better than everybody else because usually you only need like let's say uh let's say you can create something super cheap that does one thing really well and you can get 500 customers at 10 bucks a pop yep per month right well that's a that's $5000 a month that's going to pay for a half to full time developer overseas to keep improving that thing Right. And that's the key. You've got to do one thing really well that it's going to get five, you know, 250 to 500 people really excited and want to use it. Even if all the other features suck, they're like, this is, I got to have this feature. There's one feature that you have. Because of that one and, feature. Yep. And then you just keep rolling the dollars back in and making it better. And then you fill in all of the holes that you have on your other features. Sure. And, and that doesn't cause problems on the, on that you know, on the, on the design of it? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the cheap way to do it. You know, the, the, the way to not have problems is to have $300,000 in the bank that you pour, <laughs> okay. yeah. you know, like this social design app, you know, we have full-time staff and we have, you know, revenue from other business coming in, but you know, we've probably spent at least 350 K developing this. And you haven't launched it yet or have you? Uh, it launched beta launches next week beta launches next week. So, so you're just launching this and, and we're recording this. So by the, by the time this comes out, yep. you know, you'll have already yep. had beta going. How long does, how, how long does that process go? You know, beta process. Um, go? It just kind of depends. Like I'm a, I'm a fan, a fan of rapid development. Like I will launch with bugs because that's how you get stuff out. And then you know, then, and you also have the pressure on the team to fix those bugs as quickly as possible. Sure. Right. Sure. Because you got so, users paying uh, real probably, money. you know, two, three weeks, public beta, two, three um, weeks. Okay. which public beta is really like, Hey, this product is available. We're letting you in at a slight discount because we know that things are going to be a little rough around the edges Yep. for the first yep. few weeks. So really, honestly, by the time this podcast comes out, the, your product is going to be available. It's going to be available. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Okay. Uh, and what was that called again? So social design app.com. Social design app.com. Love it. Love it. I'm going to be checking it out. I'm going to be one of yeah. your first users yeah. probably. Yeah. So. At launch, it'll only be on the web. Uh, so use a computer on the web and then we'll be in the spring. We'll be rolling out a, a, an iPhone, you know, an iPhone, Android app, mobile app. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, well, this is, I mean, this is fascinating stuff. I know nothing about, uh, this topic really. And yeah. so it's, it's fun to, it's fun to talk about. What else do we need to know? Like what else is somebody that's interested so, in this and is like, this is really intriguing or I've got some ideas. What, like what else do people yeah. need to know? So the, you know, the, so the, the nuts and bolts behind it, I'll go over kind of the nuts and bolts of building and then the nuts and bolts of, of the dollar side of things, sure. the nuts and bolts of building, like literally the social design app, like I sketched it out on a, I have a remarkable tablet, you know, but basically a notebook, you could use a notebook and just scan it and literally just sketch it out, find someone on Fiverr or Upwork to do the UI design hmm. and they do the UI design. And then you find a developer on Upwork or Fiverr and, you know, basically spend as little money as possible to create a viable product. You know, my favorite um, Jeff Bezos quote is if you aren't embarrassed by version one, you launch too late. <laughs> you should always be embarrassed by version one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so, starting your podcast. Like if you aren't embarrassed by your first couple episodes. Exactly. You know, you, you, yeah. <laughs> it's like the sound was shitty, you know, yeah, it's like the right. editing was terrible and then you just slowly <laughs> get better. Yeah. 
love it. And uh, then the financial side of things is, you know, SaaS software, software as a service is, it's like real estate where it just magically builds on itself. You know, like, let's say, let's say you have a product that's $10 a month and you can add 200, let's do a hundred customers a month. Yeah. Right. So you had a hundred customers a month. Well, the first month you only make a thousand. Well, month two, you make 2000 and month three, and it just keeps building on itself. And then after a year and it just, it's this spiral hockey stick. And then, you know, just like real estate or whatever, like you, like the, the, you know, people are talking about a recession coming up. I have yeah. zero worries. Yeah. Cause I know exactly. exactly, I know how much money within 5% I'm going to make in June. And it's February right now. So that's the magic of, of SaaS software. Hmm. Because of the subscriptions, because of what people. Yeah. 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 And you know, and then, you know, there's all these online uh, billing platforms and they, you know, they know how many customers you're using, a, losing a month and how many you're adding a month. And so yeah. your net additions every month. And then it just, it can just predict out in the future for you. That's really cool. Oh, Andrew, we're going to flip gears a little bit. What's, what's yeah. a, what's a daily kind of habit that, uh, or daily habits maybe mm -hmm. that, that you have that, you know, kind of help you be successful. So, uh, this is a really easy question to answer because, uh, we moved in the fall and I ran a half marathon on October 3rd. And then at the after party got COVID and was just kind of like, you know, you're, you're down for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then I was back and then I got a big case of the lazies <laughs> and I just basically didn't do anything for November <laughs> and December. And I just got into just, I was in a crappy mood. I was yeah. feeling bad. Every Like I just, all my habits, I went off all my habits. So I was, you know, did a January reset. So now every morning wake up make my latte, uh, listen to my meditation app. Um, I have a 366 days, uh, stoic meditation book. So there's like a page for every day, read that write in my journal and then make sure I get my, uh, runs and exercises, uh, six times a week. And, uh, now I'm much better. Shockingly. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing <laughs> when you do something fairly simple, right. Yeah. And just like to get your Get mm -hmm. yourself moving, start your day out right, end your yep. day the right way. It's amazing the difference that it makes. It yeah. makes you feel like just crap and yeah. lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you're literally not I spent like I was feeling horrible and then I just like I signed up for a race. And so you've you know, I've got my my yep. run my run schedule. Yep. And I did I did my runs every day for one week and they were like three miles. So it's not like a ton of running. Yeah. And then that next week I felt like 150% better <laughs> just by doing that. Love it. Love it. Yeah, that's good. Um, what, what's a, what's a way you like to give back? So I, um, I like to, one of the things that I've been able to learn a lot, uh, through owning a software company is online marketing and how to create an online marketing funnel. So I love to help people with that. Um, you know, I will just hop on a call with people like that. And then, uh, my wife and I have, have pledged to do at least $500 a month, uh, donations to somebody that needs it. Um, mm -hmm. we have February queued up, but nobody for March. So if anybody, if anybody knows of a good donation for next month, let me know. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. That's what my local, uh, you know, one of my buddies says, it's like, just tell everybody that you want to donate something every month and then you'll come up with people something. find you. Oh yeah. People will yeah. find you. That's for sure. Yeah. Love that. Um, I appreciate that too. So what's a favorite book you can recommend to our listeners? So one of, uh, a really good book that I go back to and I read quite often is the art of living by Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, it's a very uh, simple explanation of Buddhist thought and practice. Um, and he's just a, he's, I think he's still alive. He's like, he's in his nineties now, but he used to like, he used to hang out with Martin Luther King and hmm. 
all these people back in the day. And he explains, he's like, I don't care what your religion in Buddhism's a practice. You know, you can be Muslim and Buddhist. You can be Christian and Buddhist. Hmm. And uh, it explains it really simply. And it kind of let me let a lot of shit go. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The art of living. Okay. The art of living. Um. All right. So last question before we wrap up, what are your three pillars of wealth creation? So that's a good question. I've been, I've been, you know, honestly been struggling with that a little bit. I think the number one pillar, um, being older, having living, lived through a few of these recession cycles is lean into your strengths. When, when, when push comes to shove, lean into what you know and lean into your strengths to create wealth. Um, so for example, you know, a wealth vehicle for me will be real estate, but I don't have the knowledge of like finding deals and stuff. So I'm leaning into my software to create wealth, then find a partner that knows about real estate and then take taking that wealth and putting it into real estate versus trying to become a real estate developer all of a sudden, right? Yeah. So yeah. push comes to shove, lean into what you know. Um, Don't ever start a business that doesn't have recurring revenue, right? Coffee shops are great because the same people come and get a cup of coffee from you every day, you know, um, chiropractor, uh, oil change place, you know, subscription software, subscription, anything, a gym. So businesses yep. where the same person pays you every month, yep. no yep. matter what that is. That's and why, then that's why I like uh, apartment buildings, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then my other one is because I have a I have a business partner that is a business partner in another business. Is don't get into business where you got to carry inventory. <laughs> mm. <laughs> inventory seems like it sucks. Yeah, yeah. I, um... <laughs> I hear you there. I know several yeah. people that are in the inventory business, and man, I just oh, it's tough. It's tough. It's a lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> Well, and then something, uh, you know, stuff doesn't sell. And then, then what do you do with the inventory? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, all right. Well, this has been good. Um, how can our listeners get in touch with you learn more about what you got going on? I, I think a lot of listeners are going to be interested in, in the new software too. Yeah. Uh, head on over to socialdesignapp.com. Um, that's, you know, for the social design app, I think most of the listeners, you know, are not wet professional wedding portrait photographers are probably right. not that interested in our other business. And then, um, I do consult with a few, very few people that do online businesses and passive returns.com is my uh, consulting website. Passive returns. And so to explain that just to, just to briefly, like, what is that all about? So, uh, people who are building businesses that are mostly passive. So I help them, uh, with the front end of that front end marketing funnel, and then also help them, um, step out of their business. So for example, I've, I run a software business and I work 10, sometimes 15 hours a week in yeah. that software business. Yeah. And then the, the business runs itself beyond that. So helping people, kind you know, mostly emotionally let go of different pieces of the business and put those metrics in place and those measurables in place and, and mm. pass those on to other people and, you know, teach them simple things like how to run a meeting and not being the person running the meeting, you know? <laughs> I love it. Love it. So that's passive. Do you say passive returns.com? Yep. Passive returns. Passive so returns. basically oh, wow. making money without working more. That's, that's <laughs> kind of what uh, most people are looking for, right? Exactly. We continue to make money. We don't work less, add make more, more money. More. Yeah. Yep. One of the, one of the women I helped uh, this last year went from uh 600 K to 1.6 wow. million and she's working less. Working Spending less. more time, time on her boat. <laughs> that's great that's great right? so that's what it's all about on, congratulations on you but congrat more congratulations to her on that one i know tell me about it <laughs> that's cool that's cool well look uh andrew again really appreciate it thanks for the time uh listeners we'll put those uh we'll put those websites on the show notes so you can click on those to to get to those sites but uh really again appreciate it yeah. thanks for your time and you have a fantastic rest of the day you too
Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venturedproperties.com, venturedproperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like, uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out. And, uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.